All right, everybody. So we got some pretty big news today, as a lot of people have eventually predicted, including myself over a year ago. Joe Biden has officially announced that he will not be running for president in the next presidential election in this year. That is November, early November, it's like November 5th, I believe it is. Um, so he's not going to be running. He is going to stay um, the current president. He's not resigning as president. He's just dropping out of the future race. So he will still be president until inauguration day, which is in January of 2025. So he's still going to be president till then, but he will not be the future president. There is 0% chance that he will be re-inaugurated because he dropped out. So let's just uh, read a little bit here. I just pulled up a CNN article and it just says, it's been a great honor of my life to serve you, to serve as your president. Biden wrote letter in a letter posted to his official official account on X. And while it has been my intention to seek re-election, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. So, you know, again, it's just like a kind of a typical little like politician speak where it's like, I'm just doing this for the best. He knows he's too damn senile and old and the decision probably wasn't even his. It was probably his wife's anyway. In a follow-up post, Biden praised Harris and urged Democrats to unite behind her. My very first decision as the party nominee in 2020 was to pick Kamala Harris as my vice president, Biden wrote. And it's been the best decision I've ever made. Sorry, it's hard to read that with a straight face. Today, I want to offer my full support and endorsement for Kamala to be the nominee of our party this year. Now, of course, Kamala has accepted this endorsement. She is not the official candidate. They will have to decide when they have the DNC National Convention um, which I believe is in August. I think it's in Chicago. So you know, they got to pick someone. And they got to pick someone pretty soon. And of course, uh, if you guys have been following my channel, I've made a video, I think about a year ago from now, we're talking about who I think is going to replace Biden because I was predicting all along that he would drop out. And my prediction was Gavin Newsom. Now, I don't know if that's going to be the case because I thought by now they would have already made this move and put him in there to give him time. Now, that being said, apparently they have to keep Kamala Harris in there and be to be the nominee because all the donation money can't be transferred to someone else. It's Biden and Harris's money. So that makes things a little bit more complicated. Now, what I believe would happen, and again, if you know more about this than I do, please correct me in the comment section. But I believe what they're going to do, and I mean the, like the delegates in the DNC, the higher ups, the, you know, the Debbie Washerman Schultz, the Hillary Clintons or the Barack Obamas will say, look. We know you can't beat Trump. You know you can't beat Trump. So we're going to get you out of here. If she puts up a big fight, I'm sure they have some sort of dirt on her. They will use that against her if she doesn't go away. They'll probably give her some money, offer her to be put on the waiting list to get into the Supreme Court when a position opens up, something. Whatever she wants, she'll get it as long as she uh, quietly steps out of the way. If that does happen... Who do, you, who do you get to come in next? Do you, do you try to convince Michelle Obama? Do you go with my prediction, Gavin Newsom? And that's not a positive thing, by the way. I, I do not like Gavin Newsom. I just thought that that's who, how, who they were going to go with. But it could be him. It could be Michelle. There's also been lots of rumors swirling around as of last night talking about Hillary Clinton. Which, I mean, she couldn't beat him the first time. I don't see how she beats him now, especially considering... You know, she's been a, a major election-denying conspiracy theorist for eight years. How could the left possibly vote for someone like that? Right, guys? Remember, election-denying is conspiracy theory, and she's been doing it for eight years. So that doesn't seem like a good option. And then you can go down the line a little bit to Gretchen Whitmer, the, the governor of Michigan, who no one likes. <laughs> no one even knows who she is. Doesn't seem like a good job. Pete Buttigieg, like they don't have anybody else, really, other than Hillary or Gavin Newsom, unless Michelle Obama wants it. Now, you know what's interesting? You know who they had? They had Robert Kennedy Jr. They had Tulsi Gabbard. If they were both still Democrats and they were on this ticket, they beat Donald Trump. But guess what, guys? And I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. The establishment, the DNC specifically, hates Robert Kennedy more than they hate Donald Trump. Even after the recent events. And I know what people say, oh, they try to put him in jail. They try to do this and that and that. Yep. The only reason they're not doing this to Kennedy is because they don't think he can win. 
they're, 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 they're still slandering him and trying to push him, push him under the mud. And there's a lot of people in the state still who don't even know he's running. Hopefully that changes and he can persuade people to vote for them. But if he was being pushed by the, the Democratic Party, he'd be very popular. And he would absolutely beat Donald Trump because he's going to get the independence he's getting now. He's going to switch people who are populist back over to the Democratic Party. And he's going to get people who've never voted before to get to finally convince them to vote for a Democrat because a Democrat, Robert Kennedy is saying a lot of the right things. He's talking about paying off the national debt. He's talking about chronic health issues with young kids. He's talking about them poisoning our food. Trump or Biden or whoever it's going to be aren't talking about those issues. He is. He would also expose the remaining three illegally um, held back documents from a declassified document, which is the JFK files. They're holding back 3% of those files from us illegally. You know Robert Kennedy Jr. is going to expose those files. You know he's going to keep calling out the military-industrial complex and he's going to end the Ukraine war. They don't want that. that that's the, those, those are the reasons why they hate Donald Trump. Robert Kennedy has all those same you know, characteristics, except he goes even further about the deep state, even further into corruption. Trust me when I tell you this, they hate Robert Kennedy a lot more. And if Robert Kennedy was more popular than he was right now, they'd do something about that too. Trust me. But anyway, this is going to be it for this uh, video, guys. Who do you think is going to be the Democratic nominee and why do you think that? And whoever it is, do you think they can beat Donald Trump? I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to say. Thanks again so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate that. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps grow this channel. And I'll be back shortly with another video.